I kind of don't want to say hello everyone, my name is New. Hello everyone, it's almost Valentine's Day. Now, I know what you're thinking, but New, Valentine's Day is just a made up holiday that companies profit off. I get it. But also, it's an excuse to dress real cute and go on a date with your besties. So our tradition is to make each other presents and skip the buying stuff part. This year, we were planning something special for the new Marla's Besties Valentine's Date Day. But the Rona has postponed our plans. Regardless, in this video, I'm going to show how I threw together this anatomical heart accessory, which we're going to style and wear once we get the chance to go ahead with our fun Valentine's Day plans. Perfect if you want to put a more literal spin on the Valentine's Day heart concept. Let's go, friends. As always, I started by rummaging around in my house in boxes of shit. No, I mean crafting supplies. I found this thick black cotton scrap fabric and went about sketching my design, then cutting it out so I could trace it onto the fabric. I should say that I realized when I stayed stuff like, oh, I just pulled this out of my craft stash. Most people don't have the same depth and breadth of junk lying around their houses, but for this project, most everything is not too complicated. Scrap fabric, acrylic paint, Mod Podge or PVA, glue, <laughs> some thread and a needle, a few seed beads and a safety pin. Not too bad, huh? I knew I wanted to paint my heart a gnarly red kind of color, so to make it pop off the black fabric, I filled in the shape with a white base coat. Don't forget to put something down to protect your pretty purple desk mat new! Jeez, spend money on a pretty mat just to get paint all over it, I don't know. Anyways, you could probably skip this step if you just use a lighter colour or red fabric to begin with. Where are we up to? Next, I used some red paint to start filling the details. I tried using orange and purple to lighten and darken the red to give it some different shades, but honestly just mixing in black and white ended up working best. I was working off a reference pic from Google and just painted in shadows and highlights where I could see them in the picture. Don't let this intimidate you, I promise it's definitely a lot easier than it looks. After the paint was dry, which is pretty quick when you're working with acrylics, I pinned a second piece of scrap fabric to the first one. Oh, and I also tried to erase some of the chalk I used to draw the heart. I'm going to sew around the outside of the heart to make a tiny anatomical heart plushie, essentially. This is to give it some dimension. I thought it would look more gnarly if it was plump and squishy. I think this concept works just fine without the sewing, so if you don't want to do any sewing, this would absolutely still look really cool flat. I did tiny little back stitches all the way around the heart. Another idea for this is if you don't have a lot of patience for hand sewing, you could just do a really terrible job of this intentionally. I plan on deliberately roughing up the edges of my brooch, so honestly messy stitch your way around the edge and call it a design choice, friends. Making shit in your spare time is meant to be fun, so if you don't like tedious hand sewing, just don't do it. Same dulio if you just want to use glue. Once I got almost all the way around the heart, I left a 2cm opening and tied the thread off. I then used my stupid huge fabric scissors to cut around the outside of the heart, leaving a thin border. Make sure not to cut this too close, especially if you're using a super fray prone fabric. If you're using a satin or something, you might need to throw some fray check on here, but this fabric is pretty thick, so I was confident it would be okay. I started pulling at the edges a little here, but I'll come at it again later to do it properly. Really messed it up. Using the cut, uh, bleh, not the cutoffs. <laughs> Using the off cuts, I cut them into messy little chunks to use as stuffing for my heart. Waste not, want not. It wasn't because I was too lazy to go find my huge bag of polyfill that I scavenged from old pillows. Seriously though. I often use the offcuts from sewing and crocheting to stuff little toys and things, so if you want to save money on polyfill, it's a great option. I then stuffed my heart with all the little pieces. In hindsight, I should have sewn all the way around all the little, like, tubes coming out of the top of the heart as one big part so I could get some stuffing in there, but I think it worked out okay since the heart is meant to be the, like, plump, meaty part and not necessarily the tubes. After rinsing and repeating a couple more times, I sewed the opening shut. <laughs> 
so um feel free to question why I did some of the next steps in the order I did but I got some Mod Podge and mixed it a little with the red paint and tried to reinforce the 3dness of the heart and tubes some of the Mod Podge was just as is and dried cleared and some of it had streaks of red to imply the veins you can see on a lot of reference pics of hearts I did several layers of this to make it look wet and alive and also to hide the fabric texture you can still see in the heart. I did some finessing back and forth with the acrylic paint and the Mod Podge until I was happy with how it looked. I ended up putting quite a thick splooge of Mod Podge on the top to really reinforce that wet bloody look. At this point I wanted to finesse the shapes of the tubes coming out of the heart so I took some black thread and stitched between the... I really need to google what these are called, hold on. The pulmonary trunk and the aorta to emphasize their individual shapes. So you know, the tubes. I think it really ends up selling the 3D illusion so I was pleased with how it was coming together at this point. Not bad for a quick project using scraps. So for this next part, I really wanted to buy pretty glittery crystal beads, something like Swarovski, which I know sounds super bougie, but you can get a string of them for only a few dollars. The shipping was going to take a few days though, and I'm too wildly impatient to wait. So I found these seed beads in my stash and started playing around with them making drops of blood. I strung 7, 9 or 11 beads depending on how big I wanted the drop to be, then passed both ends of the thread through the same bead to cinch the drop at the top. Then I strung both threads through some beads to imply a long clinging drip of blood. My favourite drip ended up being the biggest one, which I strung both threads separately and made a thicker, more bold, dripping blood drop. It looked nice when it was twisted together, which it didn't want to do by itself, but I fixed that later. I used the tails of my beaded blood drops to attach them to the heart. Then I used more of the same bead to fill in the gaps, add some strings of thin bead drips and sell the idea that the whole heart is dripping blood from the bottom. I also used the same thin thread to sew the two strings of beads together on the bigger trip to sell that it's one big trip better. Uh, a reminder as well that you need to make sure you have a needle thin enough to pass through your beads if you want to give this a go, otherwise you're going to have a really annoying time of it. Once I'd finished sewing around the beads, I wasn't really satisfied with how the beads are more of an orange red than the cooler red I used to paint the heart, so I just painted the beads. <laughs> Seriously, it just mixed Mod Podge with red and a little black paint and smeared it everywhere. It helps marry the textures of the fabric and the beads and also makes the beads look wetter and more drippy while also correcting the color problem. It looked really wrong at first because the Mod Podge is white when it's wet. Trust the process. I promise it dries down and looks sweet. You can also force the beads to sit where you want them and then let the Mod Podge dry in that position. So at this point I put the project down for the night and went to take a shower. <laughs> I sent a pic of my progress to my friend and like, it's just not right. Something about it was bugging me. Something is not right. <laughs> Luckily my friend suggested that the two smaller blood drips were kind of bogging the design down. So I think if I'd made them shorter or fussed with it a little more that could have worked too. But I just decided to chop them off. I like the one large drip and the little strings of beads by themselves personally. Last steps were to trim the excess black fabric down a little more and distress the edges. After that I just sewed a pin on the back and then stuck some black felt on top to hide away all the visible stitches and that's it. Now you may be asking, but new, where's the reveal? Like I said earlier, we're gonna style this frankly gross little accessory in a future Valentine's Day video. So please look forward to that if you're interested in seeing our little adventure out and about in Seoul. In the meantime, please enjoy my new fancy USB powered spinny doohicker and have a lovely week. Goodbye.